Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This, this is why I follow the sport of boxing. People ask me all the time, how do you follow this sport when it continues to let you down with boxing politics and the best not fighting the best and all that? It's because of fights like this. When boxing is done right, there's nothing that can touch it. And I follow many sports, but when boxing is done right, nothing can touch it. In this fight right here, early fight of the year candidate in March, is going to be tough to beat this year. This fight is going to be tough to beat. It had it all. It had it all. It had the slick boxer in Conlon who was, I mean, he found his range. He, he could not miss with that left hand, was stacking up round per round per round. But even the rounds he was winning clearly, Wood was doing some good things in there with the right hand. And he's Wood is a right hand heavy fighter. Um, he'll land with the left hand, but that's only to set up that big right hook that he has. And as each round went by, even though Kat Conlon is um, loading up rounds in the bank, Wood is still landing some right hands that are doing a little bit of damage each round and slowing um, Conlon up just slightly as the fight goes on, just slightly. And I had the fight eight rounds to three for Conlon after the 11th. But I think a lot of people missed it at the 11th, at the end of the 11th round. They thought it was a slip. The zone didn't do a good job of going back and, 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 and showing that punch clearly. And they didn't do a good job of showing that after the fight because I think they were more worried about Conlon, understandably so, uh, falling out the ring after the knockdown, after the knockout. But that right hand that Wood landed in the 11th, that, that landed. That was not a slip. It landed. It found its way through the guard, and Conlon never fully recovered. He never fully recovered from that right hand. He came out a little shaky in the 12th, 12th round, and then all it took was Wood landing that straight right through the guard and on the on the um, on the ring on the um, on the ropes, and then Conlon just slumped over, and that was it. Night nights out, lights out. Um, and I want to speak about the ropes because as the fight went on, Conlon in his, his corner kept yelling at him, stay off the ropes, stay off the ropes. And Conlon, for the most part, did a good job of as soon as his back touched the ropes, he clinched. And that's what you do if you're the slicker fighter and you want to and you're in there versus a slower fighter. Stay off the ropes. But as soon as your back touches the ropes, you either clinch or you spin off. As soon as your back touches the ropes, that's your signal. Get out of there. And Conlon, for the most part, did a good job of that. And Wood, for the most part, wasn't doing a good job of letting his hands go um, and, and giving himself enough room to work when Conlon was backed up against the ropes. Because Wood, a lot of times, he would throw a couple of shots and then smother his work. And then Conlon would clinch him, and that would be it. Um, but if you notice, if you go back and watch the beginning of that 12th round, Conlon went back to the ropes immediately because his legs were not there. And then Wood pushed him off. And then the referee stepped in the middle, which he shouldn't have done. He shouldn't have done. But you can see right there, Conlon's legs were not fully underneath him yet. He had not fully recovered from that shot at the end of the 11th round. And then uh, uh, probably 30 seconds goes by. They go to the other side of the, the ring. As soon as Conlon's back touched the ropes, Wood caught him with that straight right. And that was lights out. I mean, just a phenomenal fight that had everything. It had... Conlon coming out strong. I mean, Wood had a good first round up until that late last second knockdown. Um, but it had Conlon coming out strong, stacking up some rounds. And then Wood doing some good work um, and finding his rhythm a little bit in the middle rounds. And then Conlon taking back control. But as I said, it just felt like each round, Wood was finding um, some space to, to land that right hook. That was the equalizer in this fight. And we said it coming in is Wood has a good right hook. He's a right-handed heavy fighter. Not much power, not much power in his game, but he lands with it and he's it keeps you honest. And this is back-to-back. -back. Lee Wood is becoming the cardiac kid. This is back-to-back -back 12th round knockouts by Lee Wood. Last fight against Zucan. This fight uh, against Mick Conlon. Just incredible because I don't know what the scorecards, official scorecards were going to read, but I imagine that Conlon was up comfortably. He should have been at least in Wood needed that knockout. He needed that knockout badly, but this is going to be tough to beat for uh, fight of the year.
It will. And you pray for Mick Conlon. You, you never want to see a guy fall out the ring like that. You never want to see a guy damaged that way. And Top Rank's been protecting Conlon to a certain degree, which secretly tells you that um, behind closed doors, they thought his ceiling was much lower at this point than they thought five years ago when he was coming out of, as, as a pro. And I think a lot of it has to do with the lack of power, only eight knockouts and 17 fights. So he's got less than 50% KO percentage against not so good competition. So it's just tough for him to keep fighters honest. As you saw tonight, even though he was landing that left hook at will, he didn't have the stopping power to finish the job against Lee Wood, who didn't have his legs underneath him. He did enough to hurt Wood um, several times throughout this fight. But if you have that power, um, that stopping power, you can get, get guys out of there. And he couldn't get a guy the caliber of Lee Wood out of there to stop the fight. And each fight that went, each round that went on, you saw that Conlon was slowing down just slightly, just slightly each round. And then when he got caught at the end of that 11th round, that was pretty much the end of it. It was just a matter of can he get to the finish line and he just couldn't. So great job by Lee Wood once again. And he set himself up nicely for um, a big fight, possibly against the Leo Santa Cruz later on in the year. Which good for him. Four fights ago, you didn't see that. He 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 was coming off of a tough loss four fights ago. Uh, put together a nice string of victories here. Like I said, back to back twelfth round KOs, victory KO victories. He's becoming a draw where he's from, and he's graduating now from domestic level fighter to world class fighter. And we'll see what he can do at the next stage. I think he's a limited fighter, but we'll see. I mean. He's got heart. He's got a little pop in him. So, so we'll see what happens going forward. And for Mick Conley, you just hope that he can regain his senses and somehow bounce back. But his ceiling is just not high enough for him to become that world-class world world class level fighter. And to me, that's what the importance of this fight was. Whoever won this fight, you could say, all right, they've graduated from domestic level fighter to world-class fighter. And Lee Wood just did that. Mick Conley just felt slightly short of that and it's back to the drawing board for him but lee wood looking forward to see what happens for, from him going forward and what a fight fight of the year candidate god bless